conscious decision because there really is and has never really been any good press about heroin. So for you, it's not a party drug. You know, it's not known as just no, a one-go thing. Look, heroin is a funny one because what it is associated with is a whole lot of artistic people. Right. So, yes, it doesn't get a lot of good press. And certainly in the 90s, it got no good press yeah. at all. Um, but what happened was a whole lot of very cheap and clean, you know, pure heroin came into the country all at once. And I guess people my age were perfectly set up um, to be swept into kind of the glamour of it. And I know that right, sounds okay. really stupid now, but we were thinking about people like Kurt Cobain okay. and, you know, Sid Vicious and all our kind of heroes from the kind of the music world and all the rest of it. Um, and a lot of artists had done heroin. Right. And I guess in my mind it was something that was not going to make you a better artist, but it was something that was perhaps attached to people who were quite sensitive okay. and imaginative. Yeah. And that's the kind of person I was. And in fact, lots of people who use heroin are real dreamers. It's yeah. not the kind of thing that um, cocaine users get into, because cocaine users are really extroverted people. Right. Yeah, but yeah, heroin yeah. is for the dreamers, and it makes you dream. Um, and I guess I, I thought of it also as a test. You know, I was a bit naive still. I was 24, but a really young 24. And my boyfriend was only 20, but he seemed so much okay. older than I was. Right. And I thought, this is what you do when you're growing up. You do the things that scare you. Right. And heroin really scared me, so I did it. Isn't that ama it's amazing that it scared you so much, but you said, okay, I'm going to... <laughs> that is quite, <laughs> quite amazing, really. It, that yeah. What was it about it that scared you if, you know, there was this attraction to it and it was linked with that world to be... Mm -hmm. What was it about it that scared you? Well, my parents had done it, all the right things. You know, they talked to me honestly about drugs and alcohol. Right. And I'd actually been incredibly straight edge. I was, didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't anything when my friends were starting. In fact, I was really disapproving. I was very yeah, prim. Right. Um, and then I had this little kind of stupid rebellion and I thought, well, I'll start smoking cigarettes and smoking joints and things. Um, but I knew very well that heroin was a killer and it's terribly addictive and all the things that people know about yeah. it. But here it was and it was, didn't look like that. What it looked like was this amazing opportunity to walk into a new world. And when we started doing it, it was very ritualised. So it was very set up to be enthralling with the kind of staging of it was very powerful. Right. So one person would go into someone else's bedroom and in that room there would only be two other people, one to kind of observe and one to administer. Okay. And you'd sit down and the other person, your friend, would suddenly become not like the kind of normal girl that she normally you know, seemed like, but this rather you know, mysterious figure and she would put the drug in your arm wow. and then you'd lie down kind of for a little bit and then you'd get up and go out and the next person would come in. It was really yeah, staged. Yeah, like a ritual kind Very of... Very ritual initiation yeah. kind of drama, which was really captivating if you're yeah, an idiot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an idiot, you find that amazingly impressive. And I guess as soon as I started telling my other friends what I was doing, I got a reaction. Right. And they, and like they probably would have been so surprised that you... Me, of all people. Yeah, I was, was just the shyest, frumpiest little idiot. Yeah. And yes, and here I was, and finally I could say, look, I'm so I'm doing something that even you're too scared to do. Okay. And all of those things. I right. mean, they're really kind of immature reasons, but I think they feed in. And also, I mean, the fact is that heroin makes you feel absolutely wonderful at the start. Yeah, it makes right. you feel absolutely horrible quite soon. But um, At the beginning, it's quite people amazing. People don't do drugs because they're poisonous they do them because they feel fun right um, yeah and it seemed to promise a whole lot of you know um adventures that i would never have had and so then it obviously ended up getting a hold of you at the at the worst of it what was your habit costing you a day at the worst it probably was costing me about 300 400 dollars a day every single day and yeah. i was actually supporting my boyfriend as well and his right. habit so every day I needed at least five hundred dollars. Wow! And you will realise that that's quite hard to come by when yeah. you've got no job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you've got no resume, and you've got no references, and everyone is frightened of you. Yeah. And hates you. So the only thing I could do was get into sex work. Now I'm lucky that I was a woman because a lot of men have the same problem, um, male heroin users. But in their case, it's harder to do sex work for yeah. various reasons. So they tend to turn to crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, doing bergs or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I went into sex work and it actually was a good solution to, for me. Mm. Um, I 
don't know if I would have gone into sex work if I hadn't been using heroin. I'd been like fascinated with that as well as heroin yeah. when I was younger, but I'd never thought it was a place I was going to go.